to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
and uh, he's certainly a leader just in terms of what he does by example and in leading by command. Um, I'm going to read a, an excerpt from Susie Caliendo, uh, Phil's counselor, because it, it's, it summarizes on a lot of things, and then I want to touch on a couple of those. Susie wrote, as a student, Phil has sought every opportunity to best prepare for his college and career interests. He politely and professionally advocated to the CTE department for the chance to take a proficiency exam to accelerate his high school culinary studies. He passed the exam with great success and set the tone for his work and as exemplary Bainey's culinary student. Phil also planned out his academic curriculum to maximize its exposure to the breadth of knowledge that he hoped to gain in preparation for his college studies. He carefully and thoughtfully selected his senior coursework weighing the pros and cons of each option for the structural <laughs> limits of the nine period school day. Each course was selected for its rigor and relevance to its goals. Lit for Chicago Mass Media, Economics and Government, AP Environmental Science, College Accounting Accelerated, and his independent study and advanced culinary all arts all aided his progression towards college. This fall, Phil also ended up in the hospital with extreme appendicitis complicated by an infection which required follow-up of IV antibiotics during his free periods at school. Why do we mention this? Because with the precision of mastery of the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, Phil continued to balance the demands of his academic work, his role as a senior, uh, president of the senior class, and president of Bake for a Change Club, as well as to navigate the delicate communication required to alert his employer of his evolving health condition. Amidst all these, Phil earned his best grades of high school, and secured a spot on the first semester high honor roll. He's truly an amazing young man. I'll be proud to say I knew him when. Um, our food teacher, culinary arts, Adina Salmonson, uh, wrote a bit, but specifically, Phil petitioned to sort of quiz out of culinary one and to go into um, advanced studies in culinary two. Um, and normally we don't do that, but he already sort of had a reputation as a mover and shaper and entrepreneur, and uh, Adina said, you know, he passed with flying colors and actually ended up being sort of another instructor in the class. Um, my observation of Phil and what I've heard from everybody, I mean, he's truly uh, this natural teacher. He is very generous with his time. Um, he's kind of an old soul, uh, very comfortable in his own skin. He's got a very nice way about him. If I were working on a team and collaborating, I would want to be on Phil's team. Note I did not say I would want Phil on my team, because <laughs> I would be on Phil's team. <laughs> so in the competitive arena, the reason he's here is really because of uh, what he's done in culinary arts. Uh, just a few days ago, um, Phil had so far this year, he's qualified in three competitions to go to state. Last year, uh, he went to state also in um, FCCLA and Skills USA um, in terms of uh, baking, cake decorating, that sort of thing, and is really just a master in that way. Uh, timing didn't quite work, or there may have been a very sweet morsel for the board here tonight. <laughs> Which sort of leads me to the next bit. So, you know, Obviously, he's done very well in terms of that competitive arena, um, but he's also just been a doer. In his sophomore year, he founded his own uh, company called Phil's Home Bakery, and he does some catering and events things, so I'm sure he has a card probably on him as we're speaking. He actually was catering an event that last night that went a little longer than planned, but uh, at any rate. The, the thing that's pretty interesting is he's got already significant experience in the real world in terms of the food industry. Um, he's been a cake decorator and a pasta line cook at Maggiano's, line cook and pastry cook at MK, which if you know your restaurants and your foodie is consistently rated amongst the top 15 or 20 by Zagat in Chicago. It's been a staple in the restaurant scene for about 15, 20 years. Um, just kind of amazing in terms of everything he's done. Two or three years ago, he's also a co-founder of a club called Bake for a Change. And uh, the notion here was we had a lot of kids who sort of liked to bake, and they, in their first year, raised $1,600 for the American Heart Association. But Phil's specific role in uh, this with the founders who were a couple of years older than he was, was specifically to take sort of traditional well-loved recipes and to figure out how to incorporate healthy ingredients so that they were heart healthy and low calorie and high fiber and all that kind of stuff. So they've continued and uh, if you, the whole story of Bake for a Change and what Phil has done in terms of being able to use the facilities, he gets people to come in and supervise, he gets there early, gets things set up, he stays late, he gets everything cleaned up. Um, came in, we hosted District 63's, uh, some PTO presidents last fall, 
Phil set up the catering spread that our troops classes uh, set up, and he was the last one out the door in terms of helping us get everything cleaned up after a two and a half hour meeting that night and uh, put things away. I've gotten to know him this year as a member of my uh, principal's leadership team, and uh, I just wish I'd gotten to know him sooner. Um, very impressed. He's uh, kind of a no-nonsense, take-charge guy. When people are spitting out ideas, he'll be the person who brings it all together and focuses it and makes it uh, sort of achievable and doable. Um, Phil works pretty hard. I think he's got a really clear vision and a goal for what he wants in life. And everything is pretty strategic about how he's going to go for that goal. So I think in terms of our mission at 207, where we want obviously everything we do in school to inform what a student is doing in life, Phil is just an amazing example of a student who already in school is taking the ball with everything he knew when he came in. He's taken advantage of everything we've been able to teach him, and he's already making use of that. So we are extremely proud of him. I'm um, sure we're all going to be proud to say we knew him when, and uh, I'm sure he's going to do great things. Congratulations. Thank you. Who's here with you tonight? Uh, my sister uh, and her, my, my nephew, uh, and then my parents. Very good. And what are your plans next year? Yeah, so next year I'm planning to go to the Culinary Institute of America, which is in Hyde Park, New York. i uh, planning to major in food science. Um, after that, maybe work in the lab or go back into the industry, working in the restaurant. And then going back later in my last 15 years of retirement, I plan to become a teacher. Um, cooking, obviously. So it'll be fun. Or you can just language, not just in the grammar and conventions, but in the literature aspect of it. She is the most well-rounded student in that Spanish 5 AP class, according to her instructor in that area. Um, so one of the things Mr. Galanis says about her is that she, he, it's a pleasure to have Linda in my Spanish 5 AP class. She demonstrates remarkable qualities as a Spanish student as well as a person. I consider Linda one of my class leaders. She is dedicated to the pursuit of improving her language skills. She speaks and writes well in Spanish and communicates with a very high degree of fluency in the language, which is very difficult. She has an extremely inquisitive mind when it comes to the language and asks excellent in-depth questions about culture and vocabulary. As a person, Linda possesses a kind, good-hearted personality and is well-liked by her peers. And that kind, good-hearted personality then shows in the work that she does outside of the Spanish classroom in, in Spanish Club, National Honor Society, Spanish National Honor Society, Pi Sigma Pi, uh, Warrior Pride as one of the favorite preschool teachers um, at Maine West and she also um, has a huge heart in terms of donating her time and her energy toward things like the Salvation Army, um, the, the tree and the, the gifts for Salvation Army. She spends time at Maine West at the fun fair um, at one of the most popular um, the well, you were there, right? One of the most popular rides that we have is called um, Toro Loco. Uh, yeah. um, for, kids, for kids under 12, and it's hilarious. Um, they do bull riding on the back of you know kids on the. They just get on their their tours and then it bounces the kids around, and it's hilarious. And they play the music, and it, it's just a great time. But Linda gives up her time and her energy in that regard. And and the important thing is that she's doing that to promote her culture and her heritage. Um, not just to put things on her resume for college, but because she truly loves the language and really contributes to that. She was recognized by everybody in the, in the foreign language department, not just the Spanish teachers. Mr. Falico raves about you, and so does Mr. Galanis, and we are very proud of Linda and to recognize her as, as one of 207's best in this area. My mom and my sisters and my brother-in-law. Um, 
Maxi and the ball. I want to do physical therapy at Benedictine University, and of course, I want to continue with Spanish.
We don't want to bring ours down to help other ones uh, raise their standards up. We want everyone to raise their standards up. Uh, some people in uh, the administration think that there's actually too many schools and too many universities and too many social service agencies in the country that we don't. Well, I know that years ago this issue had been addressed before the Senate. Senator Palmer told you to be a long track record to try to shift this to these local districts. Right. And that's not the proper thing we, even though uh, Senator is a Democrat, we strongly oppose it here. Senator Murphy. And I'm sure you should have had now, a few weeks ago, we had a hearing, and we had uh, representatives from the school district come down and express a lot of the need down to the right to take them out the wall. So, this is the information we got back with the right way and how it would affect our school district. So, we are having a hearing, and the education task force uh, is critical right now, and we want to make sure that we are not being done. Murray, I really want to thank you for your support. I know most of the board members, you all been working in the community. Tom here, Gordon Barry, there she is. Baldwin from the Plains. I know Paula, uh, Mr. Lee, Jim Lee. So I mean, we really know everybody. We're not going to let them uh, anything. We immediately oppose this bill. And there's a whole swath of us, a whole section in the state that might be anything that uh, 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 try to get the shift. It's just us. And we, like I mentioned numerous times, we don't believe that we should lower our standards and bring other standards up. We should bring everybody up, and there's ways to do it. Thank you very much. Thanks, and thanks to our principal for all your schools. You did a great job. Okay? Thanks, Marty. 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 You're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I came before you and spoke at the November board meeting. I told you a story about my daughter and asked that she would be allowed to participate in the IHS Bowl tournament. After the board meeting, Dr. Wallace called me and we talked. The students were allowed to participate. And so uh, some of them are here tonight. They're going to introduce themselves and say a few words. Thank you. Hi. Ryan Butler, I'm the sophomore in May South, and I just want to thank you guys for letting me compete at the very time at sectionals. I was the runner up at May, missed the cut by 30 pins, which is alright. <laughs> 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 I hopefully I still got two more years if you guys allow me, so thank you. I'm Victoria Ricciano, I'm a junior from Maine South, and I made it all the way to state. I was placed second for regional, and then was a section of uh, sectional team, and then placed 66th out of So thank you again. And my name is Ika Krasi, I'm from Maine and I am a senior. And I would just like to say thank you to the Board of Education and Dr. Wallace for allowing us boys and the girls to participate in the bowling tournament. We really enjoyed meeting other bowlers and then gaining the experience of being at the tournament. We were proud to represent our high schools as well as the district as a whole for the tournament. And um, I would also like to mention that we had a boy from May West who is currently not present, but he has well made it to state. And so I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity. I'm a swim parent. I have a boy swimmer, water polo player. There's some other parents and swimmers here. We want to thank the board and Dr. Mess or Mr. Messner for addressing our concerns about the boys coughing. Um, we appreciate getting the most recent results that showed that Maine South had a couple days where the chlorine level was still high, and we know, and the other schools don't. So then we're curious what the next step is going to be uh, as, far, as far as the exhaust, or we were talking about the UV. We're just wondering, since the boys are in the pool currently, that's why some of them aren't here because they have water polo practice tonight, we want to make sure that you keep paying attention to it on their behalf. Just, and, and, and we will update on this. We've got a couple of engineers that we're bringing in to take a look at the pool to bring some recommendations back to the board. So we have, we, we wanted to get a couple of opinions on it. It looks like they're probably going to confirm uh, their, their opinions, but we will be bringing something back to the board with the idea that we would, 
whatever we would do, we would be able to conduct it this summer and have the pool uh, updated by the time we get back uh, for school next year. Thank you. Yes, and we'll, and we'll use Mr. Mesmer as a contact, but we'll update the from parents as we have been uh, all along. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the update from the superintendent. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Member Chowder, who hosted a real estate event on the and I'll let Mary uh, update you on that. Uh, well, first of all, I'd really like to thank not only Dr. Wallace, uh, but Ginny Edwards and Dave Berry, who really made it all come together. And in this uh, time of uh, social media, um, the most, the biggest impact on how they heard about it was from the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> so when they put up the press release, that's when we got the responses. And uh, it was a, a full house, and uh, the agents were just speechless about the accomplishments of um, of our District 207 and our wonderful principals all spoke and um, one, two takeaways. One was when uh, Dr. Presser said, all right, fine, I'm here to do some myth busting. <laughs> 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 and uh, when Dr. Wallace uh, talked about um, a diversity and he said, we are America 20 years from now. And they got it. It, it was fabulous to do it again next year for uh, whatever new accomplishments we've had and to introduce it to How okay. many is a full house? Four. Uh, we were, and we had somebody actually, uh, Dr. Clay from 63 came over to see if he was able to host something similar. I want to thank Mary as well because without her, she really helped the logistics behind the scenes, getting all the agents and getting the word out. So we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you very much too. Just want to quickly echo with Dr. Wallace. I think we're very, uh, this is a fantastic idea. Uh, um, and I can say in other cities or districts kind of ever done uh, such project like this, uh, bring a, a real estate brokers to, to come in to learn about, knowing about the, our history, our community is so critically important. And I think we're doing a fine step on that. Just kind of keep it up. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, anything else, Ken? First of all, I'd like to congratulate um, Maine South, East, and West on the, their three presentations. So I had the chance to see the Diviners and um, Annie and Mary Poppins, and absolutely fantastic. And, you know, just everybody did a great job, and it, um, always, I, I always tell people what a great night it is to take your kids to these shows, and you know, because it's, I, I just can't. I just, every time I see one of these plays, I can't believe I'm still in a high school. That's the thing I think that, they, and most recently, Mary Poppins was incredible. That They're still playing, so I would go to see them. Um, I have three, three announcements from Maine Community Youth Assistance Foundation at last meeting on the cap. I, I uh, reported that we were gonna have an honest conversation on marijuana at Maine South on, um, February 17th, we did have that, and we, we had a great turnout. It was uh, between 30 and 40 people, but they were all from Maine South. So I'm gonna go to Maine West on March 16th and do it again at uh, 6.30 p.m. in L101. So um, the, the, we were asked to do that. Then um, on March 22nd, we're having a town hall meeting with all of the students that are um, working with McCaff Youth on raising drug and alcohol awareness. And we have kids from Maine East, Maine West, and Maine South that are all picking topics on different drugs and alcohol and different aspects of it in society. And they'll do a, a, a kind of like a, a presentation at tables in the hallway. And then they'll have a um, actual town hall meeting in the front. They'll come into the principal's conference room at, at Maine South and answer any questions that kids and adults have on drugs. And, um, and we're prepared for that now. So that's uh, March 22nd at 6.30 p.m. at Maine South. And um, the last thing is that um, on March 24th, Thursday, March 24th, we're having a um, community coalition meeting where Sarah Miller, who's an attorney from Edred, who was our lobbying group, um, she's coming to talk on the um, new Senate Bill 100 on the school discipline. 
uh, new changes in school discipline. So it, since it affects all schools, um, even you know, middle schools, we're making that available to all of the um, community and, and parents for uh, at least to get an idea of what's going on before it hits them next year. That's um, Thursday, March 24th at 8.30 a.m. in the principal's conference room at Main South. So I just want to quickly say, um, I would say we're doing the uh, Metcalfs uh, that event was very informative, very educational, and uh, Mary and I were able to benefit, we have really learned so much, and it was very impressive to see a uh, couple of parents brought their kids to participate and educate about the, uh, the drugs and marijuana situation, so I think it's a very important education and uh, that was my next thing. I was going to bug bike to maybe do it at Anchor. So we'll make the rounds. Thank you. Um, one more thing. Uh, if you all have the invitation for the um, Educational Foundation dinner that's coming up, it's a big fundraiser. We're hoping we have a nice group from the board to come. So um, I'm on the uh, early side. So any questions or can't make it, want to make a contribution of some sort. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Any other general board updates? Sean, finance committee? Uh, finance matter February 17th at 5.30 p.m. Yes. We discussed two topics. The first one was the five-year budget for debt. Uh, we are assuming flat revenue. Uh, obviously, that's exactly what we do to state finances. Uh, CPI of 1.4%. Pension uh, cuts are being predicted at half a percent per year, culminating with a full shift to the district in 2021 of $1.9 million. Um, we're looking at a projected deficit of $11 million in five years. Uh, then on the mid-year budget update, uh, we budgeted this year for a deficit of $5.7 million. That was primarily due to the addition we put on the Main West Athletics. And right now, if we receive all four of the people in the state, and as of our meeting, we only receive one. Yeah, second one in February. Yeah, second one. Okay. Oh, wow. um, if we receive all four, we'll lower that from 5.7 million down to 4.8 million. So that's good news. Um, I'm impressed that you received two payments. Congratulations. Um, and we are working on an updated 10 year facility plan because maintaining the property of the taxpayers in the district is the most important thing to do. We adjourn with taking. Thank you. And uh, next is the uh, policy committee, also on February 17th. Oh. We're going to ask for waiving. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I need to pull up. So workers comp policy 3701 uh, we discussed and we're going to uh, ask for waiving the first reading uh, policy 4410 had to do with um, resignations and uh, uh, the background on that is that some people say oops I'm out of here oh never mind I, I changed my mind so when they give the resignation in writing, that's the resignation. And I say that nicely enough. Right. And then we added some language that allows if they want to revoke that at only with board approval. Right. Uh, next policy is 5540, the school calendar, uh, to make sure everything matches. We're going to ask um, them for our first reading in March. And then a policy 6513, personal, personal technology and social media. Bring this up to speed. I don't know. Yeah, this is a new policy that we are recommending. And it kind of goes along in the series of our other tech acceptable use policies. But this one is strictly, strictly deals with uh, people's personal cell phones and, and mobile devices and how they can and cannot communicate with official school 
business on their personal devices. You mean like Olive Hillary Clinton kind of blog, that kind of thing? Well, well we're trying to avoid something. Okay. They're exposed. They're exposed. Oh, they're expo to I mean, discovery by doing that. Is the MTA going to help us turn around and get that information out to all the members, especially? It's the first I've heard of it. Yeah. Once it's approved. Okay. It is a, for the first reading today, so we'll have a month to digest it and then board would act on it um, at the next month. I, I would expect that if Mike has any questions, he would give me a call and he'll answer them. Or he can text me. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't text Send the passenger pigeon. <laughs> do, just a question to our. Are people issued um, phones and um, no. for, for work? No. 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 Nobody. In the Nobody. Not even you? No. no. Mm -hmm. Not even me. Okay, just one. Yeah. I might have a new item for policy next no. time. Uh, the <coughs> final uh, issue is uh, policy 6720, parent organization and uh, booster club. And uh, that's a new policy. It was previously reviewed by the finance committee and outlines the board's acceptance of gifts of money, services, or property suitable for the district. Uh, it's, there's a companion policy. Uh, there was some discussion about this last time, and we're going to ask to um, have it voted on tonight. That's all I have. Okay. And all right, so um, next up on the agenda is item four. Okay. I, I want to introduce uh, Dr. Jason Klein. Uh, very quickly. Uh, Dr. Klein is going to be our recommendation uh, this evening. And I, I put this here just so we can introduce him tonight. We will actually do a vote on this after we come out of closed session. But Dr. Klein is a recommendation to replace uh, Dr. Thiele, who is leaving us to become the superintendent of Downers Grove, District 99. Do uh, Dr. Klein comes from District 21 up in Wheeling. Uh, he is one of the state of Illinois and, and also the nation's uh, top technology educators. We really, when we knew Hank was leaving, and we made a concerted effort to identify people in the area who uh, had the chops and the skills and the experiences to step in and be able to uh, uh, help keep our, our technology program moving forward. And, and Dr. Klein was at the top of that list, so we're, we're very lucky to have him, and, and uh, we will be recommending the hire once we come out of closed session tonight. So Dr. Klein, welcome to District 207. Even though you, we haven't voted on it yet. No, no, we haven't. <laughs> I can tell you one of the questions okay. that we're going to ask you in closed session is what kind of overlap we're going to get since June 30th is Hank's last day? Yes. So I'm just thinking maybe we need to work something out so we have some. Yes, I have some thoughts on that. Okay. Because certainly we greatly appreciate all the work that Dr. Thiele has done. Yes. Yes, so we have some thoughts on that. They've actually already begun doing some work. Uh, Jason was in the, in the office Friday. Uh, Google was here. They're doing a story spotlighting District 207 as one of the top uh, uh, users of uh, Google Apps for Education and Chromebook technology in the United States. So he was here Friday for that. He was actually came in early today to begin doing some work with Hank. And Hank's done a really nice job of putting together uh, a nice roadmap of where we've been and where we where we where we're going. And so so when we hand off the baton, uh, we'll try to keep uh, keep moving forward in the district. But it is a lot of moving. Right. Okay. All right. Um, next is uh, the monthly status of finances. Mary. In your board packet is the January financial statements. Um, on the revenue and expenditure side, we are within budget, and hopefully the state will come through with those payments and we can reduce our deficit. And the, when you look at the current equity, there are two funds with negative equity, the Operation and Maintenance Fund. That fund's equity will go back positive once we do the $5 million transfer from the Capital Projects Fund, which will occur at the end of the year. And then the Debt Service Fund equity will go positive with the spring tax collection. That's a holdover from the abatements that we did, and we're touching back on to create positive fund balance. Um, also in here is the mid-year fund <coughs> update. Member Sullivan stole much of my thunder by uh, well, you tapping in first. Finance, yeah, so. <laughs> that's okay. But um, we are looking to reduce the deficit to hopefully $4.8 million. Um, it's a detailed analysis by <laughs> account area and by revenue of the variances that we're seeing. Some of the highlights also include, um, unfortunately, traffic tax collections. Is slightly down, but slightly down to the big 
number, it could be about $700,000 difference than budget simply by being a half percent less than we anticipated. I'll entertain any questions that anybody has on either the major budget update or the January financial I'd just like to add for the record that we were using the current deficit uh, because we did a large building project at Main West that we spent $10 million out of our, our cash reserves that the deficit is a planned deficit due to spending cash in a responsible way on a building project. And it was money that we had saved the previous three years. <laughs> For the purpose of uh, achieving the goals of our 10-year facilities plan. Right. Yes. Okay. Mary, um, will the, the big project that's going on in his lens right now, that was, um, I think, was approved with the hotel in the area on the edge of Rosemont, that is an ATIP. Huh? That is an ATIP. So we will see property taxes from that in 23 years. Oh, we'll, we'll see an increase in property taxes. Right. An increase in property taxes. Right. So yeah. that's it's, we won't see any. But the good news is I finally got a redevelopment plan in yeah. place. <laughs> so in 23 years we're going to see an increase in taxes <laughs> because before that tip they've been trying to market that parcel of property for the last at least since I've been here, and I think before that, so probably from six to 10 years. So we have to wait for, I mean, we have to wait for property taxes. No other. This is promising progress. We have to wait for the increase that's being received. But good news is, Terry, you could still be on the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Get a chance on that. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we have anything under instructional services item six. Uh, so item seven is um, up next. Other items, monthly update on FOIA? Uh, two uh, FOIA requests this month of the which have been processed. Okay. And then we come to the uh, item eight, Board of Education Policies and Procedures. Can I have a we do them separately? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was one we were waiting. You will be no, yes, I did. typo on 4410, um, which even though it's three um, three letters, it drastically changes the meaning of the sentence. Uh, unfortunately, we, we in policy committee, we talked about two different versions where we said can only be withdrawn with board approval or cannot be withdrawn without approval. And I got 50% 50 50 of both, and it's not right. So, uh, you I think to send can send that out in Friday notes so we see the, the actual <laughs> final language. Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming we oh, want it written in the positive. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, positive. It's easier to understand that way than the double negative. <laughs> That's right. Those are probably Let's get the whole first Yes. Um, can I have a motion with respect to items 9A through F? Second. Con, second. Forward. Thank you. Uh, any comments? What's F? Student accommodations? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, uh, um, I believe there's a. We can go on a pretty regular basis. Okay. It's just a check. Okay. Um, everyone's ready? Uh, Jenny, we call the next one. Bowen? Aye. Collins? Aye. Bessler? Aye. Childers? Aye. Mm -hmm. Lee? Aye. Sullivan? McGrath. Aye. I have a motion with respect to item 10, um, policies and procedures, um, policy 3701 workers' compensation. I will move to the first reading. Okay. Second. Okay. So, um, so what we're doing is we are updating the procedures in the policy to reflect our current practice um, for the last at least six or seven years we've been using a uh, nurse triage service called Mentor for um, to do the first line of referral for our employees after an injury. So 
that they can recommend self-care or refer to a provider. Um, and it's been working very well. So this procedure just solidifies what we are currently doing, which is why we requested to raise first reading and go right to second reading. You're just really replacing the names and the contact information and the procedures for Correct. Oh, you have to vote first. Tom wants. The way first reading the vote is to approve the policy so the motion is already exists. Okay. Uh, what is the term of the term say? <laughs> that if you're voting to win the first reading and there's a vote on the policy, that vote is on approving the policy. Okay. Are there any questions or comments before we No more. I don't have any other statements. Well, okay. Jenny, if you'll take the roll, please. Childers, Aye. Lee, Aye. Bessler, Aye. Collins, Aye. Owen, Aye. Sullivan, Aye. McGrath. Aye. Um, I think we should take 11A and B separately. We have a motion on um, item 11A, Info SNAP Online Registration Program. Uh, thank you. Um, like to tell us about. Sure. Uh, this is uh, a pretty popular program used by other schools in the area for online registration and collection of student fees. Um, so we put this in place uh, for this year uh, as kind of a demographic collecting uh, tool and then build over the next year to try to get the entire online registration, or the entire registration process uh, online. Um, and it kind of goes in line with one that's coming later with these. So it's important that these proposals that's coming later as well. Okay. Um, so all this is in May, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. the data stored? Yeah. It's it's an outside company that stores the data. And in that agreement it details how they will secure that data and keep it safe. How about the, the, the time time period wise? Is it just for the uh, uh, enroll enrollment time of what? Maybe? No, it's a two year contract, so it'd be for the next two years that we would be able to use this tool. Okay. Do we use this regularly or in the instructor time of the year? Most of the time, use it during the registration window, which is spring through fall. Um, but we could also use it if we wanted to to collect fees outside of that. The, um, the, the ongoing cost, but some of this is set up, so it's larger right. than I'm assuming it's going to be in the future. There's a ten thousand dollar setup fee for this year, and then a yearly cost of twenty thousand dollars per year. And it's a, it's like a per student cost is the way that they're sliding scale. Oh yes, because every year we collect uh, a variety of forms on paper. Many of those forms contain the same demographic information as you would expect, you know, name and address and those kinds of things. What this will allow us to do is to take all of those forms, put them in one flowing digital form, collect all of that data, and dump it into our system. And then each year what we'll be able to do is instead of parents starting over from scratch, they'll log back in and be able to update change certain types of information and then submit it and we'll be able to collect the fees that way as well. This also, I'll just remind you more than many of you know, this reflects uh, interest and concerns that have been coming to us for a number of years to have an online presence in, in, in registration. It may well save us money in other ways just to move to the manpower and cost that we now attend to, the, to that feature. So uh, this is just something that we've had discussions about for probably two or three years. Uh, and it's not, we're not setting anything up with this. There are some schools that have one with registration. So does, it include, oh, does it include summer school? It can. Okay. This package does not. Oh, really? That really? would be an additional uh, module outside of the one that we're How so much would that module be? We haven't, we haven't had those conversations yet. Before we, start, watching somebody before do we it. start expanding it, we'd oh. like to make sure we take care of regular registration. What? I mean, is it? Is it just because if it's a system, why couldn't you do it? 
you can, because you I, this is the registration of the demographic information. Summer oh, school is more of a course selection okay. process. It's almost like an online catalog is the way summer school works. Mm -hmm. Where this year not making any course selections, you're just you know filling out forms and demographics and signing off on things and then eventually paying your fees. Would we eventually get to a course selection? You'll or have to, if you approve uh, Dr. Klein as oh. the next dean, you'll have to discuss that. <laughs> okay, well, first it has to be a nice segue. So how long have you been doing yeah. the enforcement, by the way? We haven't. This would be the first time. This yeah. would be the opening agreement with them. So before that, uh, who do we deal with? And we deal with paper and pencil. <laughs> and all, those, all the forms are paper. Yeah. No, we've been around for quite a while. Before that, it was kind of will. So, also online registration is also recently started. You have not had a no, online registration. No, other school here. This would be the first time we would do it here. There's other schools that have been doing it for more than a decade. But our fee structure has been prohibited from being allowed in allowing us to to doing this. So. The uh, approval of the fee structure that is coming later tonight opens up the door for us doing the online registration. It's all, all of these changes and improvements lead to this point. Is this what saves us from a lot of manpower? Correct. In the yes. But I see that uh, they're from uh, Maryland. Uh, do you have any good uh, high tag in front of, I mean, the, uh, this, uh, companies in the state of Illinois? Not to do this. We, we've looked at many products that are out there. There's really only two that service schools our size and our complexity, and this is the best of those two. It's a really niche kind of market. But it, uh, the cost seems fairly reasonable for what they may be able to do and, and the amount of paper reduction that this Absolutely. will allow. Um, I'm saying for families too, that's the other thing. For us and for families, yes. And, and just better data. You know, you can imagine, you know, when you take all of these paper forms and somebody has to read somebody's handwriting to yeah, see what an say. email address is <laughs> yeah. and then enter it into a computer. You yeah. know, it, well, my husband fills those out, I pity the people who get them. <laughs> <laughs> so this will give us much better data and, yeah, to use. Real quick, when you asked about, when you said it because of the fee structure, are you talking about the $355 flat yes. fee? Okay. Uh, that's two items from now on the agenda, but they're, they're closely connected okay. in what we're doing with overall registration. My comment on this is it's way over. Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I think we're all good. Lee? Aye. Childers? Aye. Owen? Aye. Bessler? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Collins? Aye. McGrath? Aye. I have a motion on item 11. B call one the B O I P lease of Green Tent and Sean. Thank you. A second. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. This is a contract that we brought to you earlier and we approved a five year lease on this. After uh, my team and Mary and I looked at this a little more, uh, we felt that the, the additional outlay of cost for the lease agreement wasn't worth doing. Uh, just, it adds on a lot of expense that we thought was not going to be good money spent. Um, so Mary and I, after discussing this, would like to bring it back to the board as a one-time capital outlay purchase. Um, just pay for it, do it, rather than lease it. And uh, doing so, you know, not only saves us the money in leasing, but it also, we start regaining some of the capital, making some of the money back right away. Uh, although this is not a, this is a project that kind of pays for itself over a long period of time. This is a, a seven to eight year payback on this one. Okay, so this is a, a change in the agreement from a lease to a purchase. Yes. It, same dollar amount. No, increased dollar amount? No, uh, it, it would have increased. What you approved, this is less than the deal that you <laughs> approved the last time because the lease costs are removed from it. Oh, it's just the less. equipment costs. We're less. not carrying <laughs> Yes. I want you to pay less. Yes. But 
you're paying for it all up front rather than over five years. What's the payment plan on it? This is a one-time payment out capital outlay of seven hundred sixty-four thousand six hundred eleven dollars and forty-nine cents. And, and that money was sitting in what? Oh, it's in capital it? capital accounts. The capital account and the operation and maintenance fund. I, I mean, we'll use reserves to cover this. Right. So this wasn't. This was not a non-budgeted item. However, the lease carried an interest rate of about four percent, and when. I'm getting less than one on our money. It just doesn't make sense to spend 4% on debt. I mean, we, we'd have to go out and I wouldn't approve a 4% lease. We'd have to then go out and look at bank financing to get a better interest rate. It's still going to be That's at least double of what I could get. Right, I hear all that. That's not where I'm going. So you're taking $764,000 out of reserves? This was, well, we, if you recall, we hope to have a balanced budget. With this item, this adds about $600,000 in additional expenditures. So we'll still try very hard to bring a balanced budget forward, but it's $600,000 of money next year that we had not planned on. So what are the reserves down to? Um, in the operation and maintenance fund, I believe they're about 10 or $11 million projected at the end of the year. But the bottom line is the board already approved an agreement that would have cost us more over the five year period. Yes. I, I, that's not lost on me. I just want to know we're taking a hit about yeah. three quarters of a million dollars that we weren't planning about on. About 600 in. because we would have paid the first year of that lease okay. agreement. Okay. And through dealing with agreeing with uh, these companies, how this would benefit actually for the our parents or possibly students? Were they, were they able to? somehow somewhere able to benefit this is our phone system so yeah. so that means that our phones I, we have 10 year old technology that's not going to last we can't get parts sometimes even this year our phones have been less Plus than the cost of yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it, it's a very expensive system for us to maintain right now with a very low feature set in comparison, uh, some of you have experienced that calling Dr. Wallace in the past. Um, yeah. Our phone system is very dated at this point. You always answer to my phone. Why did yeah. my phone, this was posted in the Can first place? Can another example? <laughs> <laughs> You're the one called here, just the calls. The, the voice over IP system was proposed because it's part of our maintenance of the infrastructure for right. the district facilities and buildings. We proposed that we were going to lease it because generally speaking, when we lease long-term things like this and like copy machines, we do better turning around holding the money. The problem is that the value of money in terms of borrowing it, you know, has gotten so far down into the basement, you know, when we're talking about the end of the bank, yeah, one percent or less. Yeah, so I'm asking our finance budget and our tax disclose the amount of the lease in their initial documentation. Correct. Wait, so when the check, they did not. So not. when they proposed a five-year lease, didn't tell us the cost and the initial information, when we got the follow-up paperwork that showed the amount, it was like, we need to reassess this because we're not gonna pay over $800,000 and, you know, and pay 4% interest, so. Okay, so, so you came to us and you said, we should lease it, it's a good idea to lease because money's cheap, all those things. Then you got the information and they said, no, it's gonna cost more than what, than what we, we told you started. and so now, the recommendation is to buy it instead of lease it because it was going to cost more to lease than we thought it was going to cost. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Well, the technology department got a copy of the lease. They, they said, hey, this is not the same number, Mary, that we you know, we had talked about last month. I'd like you to take a look at the documents. So I'm like, but you know, we have everything. They changed it? They didn't well, just. What it was was the lease, they, had to go to an outside leasing company for this. It, Say it no wasn't more. through them. Say no so more. Mm -hmm. once they had to take it to the outside company, okay. that's I'm where their cost okay. increase went up. So quickly, so buying and leasing, uh, what was the price wise here? Either way, the, co the cost of the equipment is $764,611.49, okay. which is the amount that the board increased plus the cost of whatever the lease was going to be in the last one. When that lease agreement came back and it was unreasonable, we're coming back saying, we'd like to purchase the same thing, but without the lease agreement attached to it. 
that lease agreement would have added another, what was it, 80,000 plus dollars, 86,000 dollars to it. So we're saying we'd like to drop the leasing portion of the proposal. We're going to finance it ourselves. Finance it ourselves. Instead of paying someone to finance it. Save yes. 80 grand. And save 86,000 dollars. 15,000 a year, we can for five years. Yeah. So that's what the, the lease that they that we proposed the last time was a five year lease. And we would own it at the end of that lease. We're just gonna own it sooner. You own it sooner now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You get the keys this year. So when we own it, how long would, would that technology or the equipment for last of about seven to ten years. And then again okay, you have to probably invest one under just like you have to buy new phones at home, we have to buy new phones here. Seven to ten years is, um, that would be a long time. Yes, in the world. that's what we got out of the last one. <laughs> uh, we, we got yeah, a little, we got about eight years out of the last we, one. We will expect your successor to get a little. <laughs> <laughs> when we don't get a power surge. <laughs> Are there any other questions about this? <clears throat> All right, uh, hearing none, Janine, if you'll call the roll, please. Sullivan? Aye. Owen? Aye. Lee? Aye. Collins? Aye. Childers? Aye. Bessler? Aye. McGrath? Aye. I have a motion with respect to item 12, approval of student resources. Sean? Second. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, I'll take us through this, please. Sure. Um, one of Ken's goals this year was to reduce uh, student fees by uh, at least 5%. What this proposal does is uh, needs that plus some. Uh, this reflects the work that we've been doing for about the last four years in moving from print textbook to digital textbooks and changing kind of our, our funding models. So what we're proposing here is to roll all of the costs that uh, families uh, have for students into one uh, fee and then kind of amortize that cost over four years. So that you end up with a cost that families can kind of plan on and count on each year <coughs> after year. What this number reflects in $355 is the $114 in student fees that have been there every year, the Chromebook costs, and then all textbook and supplemental resource costs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a, uh, an estimated savings of about 6% um, over last year's, and last year's was down, uh, it's in the documentation, but it's we're down 12, 15% over three years ago. So this reflects the continued downward trend of those textbook and resource costs for our family. There was a question today, it's a good question, what, what about the freshmen this year? If they've already bought their Chromebook, then what is it, 65 so percent six, is less than what it's a sixty-five dollar. We built in sixty-five dollars per year for the Chromebooks. So if you're a student that already owns a Chromebook, uh, your fee would be two hundred and ninety dollars, not three hundred and fifty-five dollars. So if because you've already sophomores, juniors, yeah. right? So sophomores, juniors, and seniors will be two hundred and ninety. The Unless only you're option would be a kid that moved in. Right. So <laughs> if you're a new student. It's still 355 because you need a Chromebook. Um, so, uh, this is great. This is really, I think this is really great. For the parents, uh, if uh, they have some financial concern in this particular situation, could they come to the school and maybe ask for some kind of special? We, 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 we work with parents, hundreds, at, at each building every year, just, just on it. So, the principals do a really nice job and the staff do a really nice, nice job of making sure that. We work with parents and, and put our yes, we Yes, we, we've, we've done that for years and years and years. But so also for parents who, you know, they can actually plan their costs. Yeah. There's not, I mean, there are some additional costs, yeah. driver's ed. Driver's ed. There's a few plan a la carte kind of items, photo, art, driver's ed. We also brought the driver's ed, one of the driver's ed fees, too. But yeah, we did review well, yeah. yeah. So then currently for our district, we do not really see without any parents or students who could not afford to pay for right. 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 So the $350 driver added that to the fee? Or is that the old fee? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. no this is the, the, the fee that's going away is the 
the classroom, classroom cost. The, the classroom the cost, the that was last you, month. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the driver's at, driver's at <coughs> That is still the cost. That's for still the cost for, yeah. the, for the behind the wheel portion, but we dropped the classroom of what was that, 155? 75. That was We're last month. More than private. No, no. No, no, no. No, not even close. Not even close. <laughs> well, this is, well, it's 450 for a bike from our expert. And that's, they, they, what I think what you're saying is this is all you would pay. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. what I that's all you would pay for driving. What would you pay? For 20. 350. 350. Plus, plus the classroom. No, no, you never played both. The classroom fee was a fee we charged for kids who the kids it was who only just for the classroom year. component, uh -huh. which okay, we can accommodate without okay. additional so, so we dropped that I one. That's what I I understand. Waiver was subscribed. Yeah. 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 Okay, I've got a Chromebook question for you since Dr. Hank won't be here because that one's <laughs> Wait, when we brought Chromebooks in, the theory was if somebody left here after the freshman year, they own the Chromebooks and they care of each with them. Now they're not going to own the Chromebook for right. until their senior year. For us, that one. We collected that. There's a procedure when students leave anyway for collecting textbooks or anything else. And we we uh, we already use this for students that are on fee waivers. If a student's on fee waivers, we still own that Chromebook. So a student on fee waivers that leaves the district, we recollect those as well. Um, and if one was not turned in, we lock it down, and then all that happens when you start it up is a screen that says, this device is lost, please return it to you, school district 207. Okay. Good answer. Just a quick uh, driver education. So uh, if the kids, students take the uh, driver education in our class, that's pretty good. <coughs> if they try to save the time or it's flat and they go outside and doing it, how much? Oh, four, yeah. And are they? Are we still in a long line waiting period for students to yes. take the advantage of taking driver license at the school? Yeah. That will always be one. Yes. Unless we add additional staff, which would be costly, because the cost of driver's ed is about fourteen hundred dollars a student. So. I think the boys just remove those bags. When we took the uh, driver's I mean, education at school, we were able to. But the horses were to go outside. Long time. And I, I do want to connect the two proposals earlier together. So, what this allows us to do now is to have a consi more consistent fee structure so families can go in and know kind of what they're paying in advance and then select the correct fees and pay the correct fees at checkout using the post staff where before it was so itemized by course there was no possibility of that occurring so that's why you know earlier i said the two were connected that's how they connect back together that's just a very quick question if the parents who is not resourceful to a technologist like this uh, and how do they get funded? We'll have, they fund their we'll have some locations set up in each school during the registration windows where they can drop in and get help for you. Are there any other questions? All right, nothing. We uh, Bessler. Aye. Childers. Aye. Collins. Aye. Lee. Aye. Owen. Aye. Sullivan. Aye. Aye. All right. Um, Item 13, uh, new club proposals, there's three. I'd like to take them separately or at least take them separately. Okay. So motion with respect to 13. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone else reviewed the... <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Go ahead. We know what's coming. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have some concerns because they're actually manufacturing medical devices. Um, there is this enable... Uh, the future website, um, but the information provided says they will be modifying the designs provided by Enable the Future, and they will be using um, a contract such as the one on Enable the Future. I'd like to not like this down a little bit more um, to make sure that one, as a district, when we sponsor a rate club like this, we're not creating some kind of liability for the district. Absolutely. And and I, don't, I mean I think it's a great idea. 
and, and I support it, but I want to make sure that we're not creating liability for ourselves and that, you know, if they're going to use Enable the Future, they use Enable the Future, that our sponsorship means they still could do that and they have to use Enable the Future's contract so that we don't, we're relying on their legal staff not getting our own legal staff and having legal liabilities. I, I agree, Margaret, because one of the things in medical devices is that if you're involved in the manufacture of a medical device, your site has to have quality compliance with all of that site. So that's a big deal. I'm, it's a huge deal. And um, I, mean, I, I don't know. We, I didn't read anything about that. I went to the Enable the Future website. They seem to have covered it for individual volunteers. I don't know about groups that are being sponsored by something like the school district. Whether and and, and this does not end one hundred percent to using their designs and their contracts. So I, I just I, I'd like them to go back and uh, yeah, designs type though for these always have to be modified because each prosthetic is made to match the I, whatever appendage you're attaching to. So every every design that they provide you naturally will have some modification because there's actually a scanning process and a building around the person that the, the prosthetic is being in. I, I, I just think this needs to be, I, I think up before we okay. You guys remember Hari Priya who came? Yeah, she's month. awesome. She built a prosthetic uh, hand and, and wrist for a student at Western Forum without one, and she is just flat out amazing. And, and uh, so we will we will investigate uh, hopefully to the board's comfort what we need to, to have. Uh, I mean, I, it's like, gee, here's a club that I think is, I mean, a project that I think is amazing mm -hmm. and um, giving back to the community, and at the same point in time, I think we have to protect the district and the taxpayers from. Um, anything that might later somebody gets injured, yeah. you know they're they're looking for whatever deep pockets they can find. Um, yeah, especially since it wants to be an ongoing thing. It wasn't a one-off thing. I mean, it's but a, an individual. Thing. Yeah, right. It's it's really cool. So do, do, are, am I hearing that we want to table this one for tonight? Yes, I'd like, I'd like to okay. table this one for tonight. Okay. Uh, well, okay. well, it gets better because we're going to ask you to approve the Feminism Club followed by the Cosmetics Club. <laughs> I have your thoughts on both. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make a table. Thanks, Dr. So, President. Well, so, 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 vote on the motion to table the recommendation for the 3D Innovations Club? Sullivan? Collins? Aye. Bessler? Aye. Charlers? Aye. Owen? Aye. Lee? Aye. McGrath? Aye. Nice. Can we do the, I, I think we can do the next two together. Uh, no, I don't. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can do them separately. I, I would like to make a motion to uh, support the, to approve the feminism club. And we have a second on that. Second. Um, in reading their, um, their charter, uh, they said that um, members have to attend 75% of the time, and I, I think that's a really good thing to include in there. Uh, there was a reference to certain officers, and it did reference his, her, so it answered my question. I want to be sure it was open to all of his um, So with that said, I suggest we any other questions or comments on this? I will say I saw the same things and I thought that was... And, and their purpose is for sh to help shelters and I think that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Sorry there's a need for it, but they haven't to address it. Right. Any other questions or comments on this proposal? Mm -hmm. right. Hearing none, your name will take the roll. Uh, perspective on this call. Childers? Aye. Lee? Aye. Owen? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Collins? Aye. Bessler? Aye. McGrath? Aye. Uh, I make a motion that we um, um, approve the cosmetic book. Uh, okay. I was thrilled to see this. I'd love to see a um, um, go beyond cosmetics. Uh, good style club. Uh, clothing style. They do charge $5 per member. They don't ask for 75% of attendance. And to raise money, they want to have a fake sale. I think I would like to suggest that they do cosmetic applications and raise money that way. 
Uh, for prom, for all kinds of things, yeah, for, for yearbook pictures. Uh, I just wanted to say that about the cosmetic oh, yeah. <laughs> With that being said, I would encourage you to that. Just for curiosity, like cosmetic gloves or so, I hope this is not going to bring a girl's competitions and beautiness and, I don't know, conflicts of... I think the title is confusing, but it's good grooming. It's confidence. It's not like uh, because of this financially the kids spend more money or they buy rich item stuff. I, I talked to one of the kids that was going to be in this club, and they were just so excited that it, you know, it was like such a stress-free club. All they were going to do is go and put makeup on, and they were like all excited because it didn't have anything to do with school. It was totally stress-free, and I, I thought that was a great reason to have it. If that if it's a way to alleviate anxiety, go for it. You know, I, I think and the confidence building is huge. Yeah. They're going to be looking at each other. No, that's too much makeup. Oh, you could use more here. I think it's a, a lovely idea. I you might want to do it for title. Okay, I'm, I'm there's been a huge explosion I'll, I'll, online. In fact, there was a Maine South student who was very, very successful in launching a, a YouTube okay. channel on this, and he's now in California. Um, right. So that is causing a lot of, and a lot of these kids are using these at the online. Is anybody else here Twilight using them? <laughs> 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 it's a joke, buddy. I think it's great. And I think I think it's great symbolism that we have a feminism club next. You know what? Oh, absolutely. That's more in here. The other thing is that, you know, when they say, um, they said about the fundraiser, what I'm realizing is that all kids, when you ask them about a fundraiser, how are you going to raise money, they all say a bake sale. Because that's what they have in their head is a bake sale. I mean, or at least that's what I'm realizing that the more kids I talk to, it's like, oh, let's have a bake sale. So either they really like it or it's the only thing they know. Except for that club that sold the mattresses. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I, I hate to tell them how to do it. I just hate to put in anything that tells them how to do something. They want to raise money doing whatever. Let them do it. But we, just, we just don't want, we want to make a sale. You know, any kind of right. right. We'd like to at least know what they're thinking about. Right. And, and then, of course, the sponsor would have to approve it anyway, so. All right. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. This kind of, this kind of response will not lead to financially discriminative for the people who could not afford to buy a XYZ cosmetics or whatever. Okay. Uh, any other? <coughs> All right, you're going to take the roll. Lee? Yeah. Collins? Aye. Bessler? Charlders, Aye. Sullivan, Aye. Owen, Aye. McGrath. Aye. <clears throat> um, I have a motion with respect to uh, item 14 A and B. Thank you. Um, you uh, any information you uh, yeah, think we need to know, Audrey, about the detail later? Um, no, they use our um, academic junior centers every year, and then the fire department uses our and, and there's a, um, does academic tutoring uh, remind me if they have a reduced fee yes. for yes. some students? Yes. yes. And do we know approximately what percent of the? Uh, I think it's on the 12 students and it's a $50 reduction. I knew, it was, I knew I saw it on the This is it's probably the last year that we're going to be doing ACT tutoring with the switch to SAT next year. SAT, you can download all of their tutoring materials for free. Our kids get to take three SAT tests once they register, which is really great. And all of the SAT stuff is on Khan Academy, so it's going to be a game changer you know, on some of the tutoring things moving forward. I'm sorry. You don't think people, you don't think they'll have tutoring? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the kids are going to have access to Khan Academy's got a lot of the ACT, the SAT tutoring. And SAT gives you their uh, <coughs> SAT tutoring guides. You can download them off their site for college board for free. And the kids get three SATs. Yes. 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 Not even samples. It's official tests. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
there are no other questions, uh, we we'll take the, the roll on this one, please. Yeah. Owen? Aye. Collins? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Bessler? <coughs> Aye. Lee? Aye. Childers? Aye. McGrath? Aye. Uh, motion with respect to item 15, the intergovernmental inter intergovernmental agreement for vision and LMS. <coughs> Second. Thank you. Why is it 63 part of it? I believe when that set dissolved there were agreements that we entered into with 62 and 64 to share cost savings or they didn't have a teacher. This is the same ratio yeah. of my set. Nothing has changed. This is an annual so so but there's students with mobility problems in 63, aren't they? They and Mary, I can't remember exactly I, I what their reason was. Their own. They made a different choice. Yeah. We, we talked about when, and this is, gosh, six, seven years ago yeah. now, when we made, when we dissolved from NetSAP, for whatever reason, and I can't remember what it was, but 63 chose at that time not to enter into this intergovernmental agreement. I don't even remember what it was, but I, I, they had the opportunity yeah, and chose not to. Person, I, think. I think they had it. I don't think they wanted to share the service. Right. I think they had enough of a meeting to have their own person way back. It wasn't because they weren't welcome. They just made, they made the choice. Right. We that shared time. instead with two other districts. The board president was here earlier, right. so we could have. And actually, Janet was on the NSF board, so she yeah. might she might even remember uh, what the what the deal was on that. I, I thought the perception was that they thought they would get a better deal than enjoying the rest of the I, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember, Sean. It might be that. I, I can't remember. They have never been part of the center government or agreement, and it was just not an agreement. Not in this one. This one has been in this one for several years. Are there any other questions or comments? But they're, of course, walking in the line. Of course. Sure, of course. But do they know? I'm sure they, they know. do, because our director indicates that there is. Right, uh, Jimmy, you'll take the roll, please. Sullivan? Aye. Owen? Aye. Childers? Aye. Lee? Bessler? Aye. Collins? Aye. McGrath? Aye. Uh, next up is calendar items. Are there any uh, items to be added to the calendar? We have to schedule a finance committee meeting. I will propose that we could do a, a joint building grounds finance at 5 o'clock on April 4th, immediately before the board meeting, if that works. I know we lose a week for spring break. And the earliest we could have it would be after, would be as early as next week. So if that works for finance, that's, Sean said, I should ask you guys tonight. Yeah. <laughs> if that works, okay, I'm out of time for work. I'm not, I'm not April 4th. Why don't we look and see whether or not we can make it happen next week? Well, we can do finance next week. The buildings and ground bids are not going to be open until March 23rd. And, and, I, and I'm out of time that. Yeah, because the spring break, we would. Yeah, but I'm okay if we want to do finance next week. And we can do policy because I need to have a policy committee meeting. So we can do policy and finance the same day. So what we have, Jimmy, shoot our email. Let's always find this to whether or not we can make a date and handle finance and policy that we just do buildings and grounds. That way it'll be quicker before the We're talking about the week of 14th, correct? Yes. No, but with spring break, that's you can't. You, it either has to be the week of spring break, which I figured I lose everyone, yeah, <laughs> or before the board meeting. But that's, that's what she asked. It needs to be before the board meeting. Right, because we've got all the bids yeah. before the board the bids, on construction. The bids that are coming open on the twenty third, but you're then going to turn around and vote on the building and ground on April fourth. Are you planning on bringing those to the board that night as well? Yes. Who else is that building for the ground? Jim? Jim? Oh, no. Jim? 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 Okay. But my problem is turning around and discussing and reviewing bids as a committee. And I'm okay with rec making a recommendation, but if there's a problem, we've got no time to solve it. Well, then our other option is Terry and Paula, maybe on the 23rd. Are you here on the 23rd? 
In the future, I told the building oh, reps and Charmin that they needed more time between the bid opening and board meeting, so it's not going to happen next year. Okay. Yeah, that's 23rd is a Wednesday. I'm okay the 23rd. Okay the 23rd. And you're okay the 23rd. So this is building to grounds. And I don't fly out until the 24th. So if you if we have the if we have the meeting that night, I mean they'll be they'll, you'll have bids. They will not have been vetted. So you have architect recommendations. No, if the bid opening is at one o'clock on the 23rd. Well, I know, I know. The the other option you've got. If, if there's a problem on the 4th, then you're going to have to schedule a special meeting of the board to try to vote on it. Yes. Okay. Next year, we're allowed so three weeks. So let's aim for the 4th, then. Well, does that mean, well, I know it's supposed to be only personnel Question, yeah. on the 11th. Well, yeah. and what I do, by the 4th, your stuff will be out the week of spring break for you to read. It will be architect vetted. It will be all scope reviewed. And have, I, you will know before the 4th if in my opinion, we should be postponing a bit more now. Which architects? Um, this is still, we actually went mostly direct to civil, and we used Archon for road. I mean, these are not ginormous, crazy bid projects. Okay, so what are we doing? We can get it in five, don't we? Well, we're going to fly in and back uh, maybe like 5, 6 p.m. So that's why I've been asking this numerous times, April 11th. Yeah. We will not, that, that is a placeholder. We, there's probably about, unless, the only thing that right now we would anticipate doing is if we can't get the, uh, the, the bid process turned around in time, we might hold a meeting, but it would be the, just the buildings and grounds. There's a very slim chance that for personnel we would have to call that meeting. But in all likelihood, we wouldn't, and we haven't called one. I can't remember the last time, frankly, that we, we called one. So we always have, have two in case we have a personnel matter due to reduction in force that we make an error on. And we have a, a statutory deadline of 45 calendar days before the end of the school year to meet. And therefore, we always have this extra meeting just in case. Since I've been doing this job, we have always ended up canceling it but we always keep it on there as a placeholder. So just for FYI, three of us will be in Boston and coming back again. I'm pretty confident. On the 11th. Yeah. The thing is, Ken, while it'll be a building to grounds issue, we're talking about the 11th bringing those proposals back before the whole board. So I don't know. Okay, about buildings and grounds. So. Well, but the, co oh. the committee meeting, if it occurs we'll still have four proposals. Oh, okay. That's going to be four. Two members of the committee will be around on the 11th. Carla? Yes. Yeah, me too. So, yes. Yes. So we have two members of the committee and four board members. Right. And what time would you think you guys would be five, five, something? Well, let's, let's, we, we have, we'll plan a contingency and we hope, hope we don't need it. Yeah, because Jim was real specific. He didn't want to travel at that time, so he could be available. Uh, I, on the other hand, wasn't worried about it because I'm Boston. Nothing on the 23rd? Nothing, Nothing no. on the 23rd. Sorry, and we're going to do a finance policy next Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday. The reason there's nothing on the 23rd is because you're saying they won't be vetted, reviewed. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm just clarifying. Right. So finance policy either Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday of next week. And buildings and grounds uh, April 4th. Okay. At what, five? Appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees. 
in item G, litigation when an action against affecting or on behalf of the particular body has been filed and is pending before a corporate administrative tri tribunal or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent. I move to go into closed session for B, C, and G as well as the main Second. I think James is seconded. Uh, can we take the roll, please? Bessler? Aye. Childers? Aye. Collins? Aye. Lee? Aye. Owen? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. McGrath? Aye. We are here. Second. 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 Okay, take the roll. Sullivan? Aye. Owen? Aye. Lee? No. Collins? Aye. Childers? Aye. Bessler? Aye. McGrath? Aye. Well, should we do? I'll do four last. Okay. That's fine. So I'd like to move uh, 20 A through H. Okay. 20 A through H, including the appendices of E and G. Is that second? Second. Aye. 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 Aye.